Okay, well, the Earth Light Institute was basically designed to encapsulate, capture, uh, and catalyze the movement of humanity into space. We are at a time in history um, where the capability to actually leave the planet is about to be achieved, and in a way that uh, will allow us to go wherever we go and stay wherever we go. In other words, the beginning of the expansion of human civilization beyond the Earth is about to happen right now. Now, when this is characterized in the media today, it is often characterized as a bunch of rich boys and their toys, they talk about tourism, they, they don't get it. They don't seem to um, understand what it is they're seeing. Um, we're actually putting, uh, as one, one of my friends said, we're putting the epic back into it. Um, what is really happening right now um, is that you're seeing a bunch of companies, a bunch of organizations, founded, created, run, and operated by people who share a dream. And they are out trying to make this dream happen using whatever tools are available to them, be it a government contract, be it a uh, flying some rich person in space, whatever it is, they're trying to figure out ways to uh, pay for the realization of their dream. The dream, the drive, whatever it is that they have inside of them that is pushing them in this direction. Many of them uh, don't articulate that very well. Uh, they haven't been able to, uh, or haven't felt comfortable in some degree, uh, coming out with the why of what it is they're doing. Um, the how is the technology, it's the engineering, it's the rockets, um, and that's everywhere around us. Um, but the why, they know it's in here. They can't sometimes come out with it out here in a way that gets it across to people. So Earthlight, excuse me, go ahead. So why? Well, the why of it is, is I believe, at the level of human destiny. It is who we are. Um, and Earthlight is, going to, is coming out, sorry, Earthlight's coming out and saying, we exist as human beings to expand humanity beyond the Earth and to experience the universe so that the universe experiences itself. Now that sounds very much like, dude, <laughs> let's talk about it. This is actually something that we believe needs to be talked about in our movement because we are indeed a movement. This isn't a bunch of rich boys and their toys. It isn't a bunch of geeks just playing around with things that blow up. Although that's all part of the fun of this. Um, we are about something grand, something important, and possibly represent the epitome, the culmination, the jumping off point of our entire civilization uh, and all of the activities we have undertaken as a civilization leading up to this moment. Uh, they bring us to a point where we, for the first time, can actually leave the planet and are on the verge of being able to leave the planet and not have to return. That, we believe, is the turning point of human civilization, the turning point of life itself in the universe. Um, when I talk to people uh, in public, and I, I, I do a lecture called God and Rockets that I've uh, done a, a few times around, and in that I like to stir people up by asking the question, um, are we alone? Because everybody wants ET to be out there. Everybody wants, you know, there's billions and billions of stars, and you know, and they've all got, and everybody gets excited when they come up with um, new evidence for Earth-like planets, and the survey keeps increasing the numbers that they're finding, and uh, they're finding more and more in what they call the sweet spot. Um, but they're also finding some other interesting things. For, for example, obviously everybody knows SETI, which is out there looking for alien life forms, hasn't found any. And they're looking pretty hard. Not found anything, not a single indication. One of the uh, other things that's going on is they're finding a lot of stars that are roughly um, in the same period of aging as our Sol, as, as the Sun. And um, one of the things they're finding is many of those stars have a, uh, a large uh, metal component in them. What that means is that 
the metals that normally would go into the makeup of planets like the Earth haven't left those suns and become, the par have, and become part of planets. One of the reasons we exist in, uh, in the Earth, uh, excuse me, one of the reasons we exist uh, on this planet is the fact that we have a certain combination of metals and chemicals and elements. Not just that we're a certain distance from the sun, but that, for example, that we have a molten core that rotates. Um, that causes certain things like um, the Van Allen belts, which puts a magnetic shield around us that, allow, that blocks cosmic rays that would destroy our DNA and not allow life to exist on this planet. That's because we have a molten core. We are partially find ourselves on a planet with a molten core because that, that metal, those metals, were ejected at an earlier point in the history of our solar system by the sun, captured and became a part of this planet. If you then are out looking at, plan at planets and solar systems out in the universe and you begin finding suns that are close to ours and you realize that those suns still have their metals, as opposed to ours, which has lost a lot of those metals, which found their way into planets like the Earth, that tells you that we may be a little further along than they. And when I talk to people about what, what our level of maturity is, shall we say, in the universe, and, and why we may be it, it's not that there's some absolute, there may only be one planet with life on it ever. No, what I'm saying is maybe maybe we're the first ones to cross the finish, or the beginning line, okay? Some, if you think about it, the universe was formed in what they call the Big Bang. That's the major theory right now. What that means is everything in the universe was formed at the same time, at exactly the same, almost a nanosecond, it was all created. Therefore, given all the different things that can happen to civilizations before they become a civilization, and then that civilization makes it through a uh, certain period of time where they don't destroy themselves, where they use the technologies to leave the planet, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's not going to be very easy for most civilizations to make that. And somebody's got to be first. Maybe we're one of the first civilizations to make that threshold. That's why we can't find anybody else. 